So we're up to line 55 and what follows now is pretty much an extended riff on the virtues of marriage and a massive exercise in irony. So you've got to remember the framing device of the Canterbury Tales, these pilgrims whiling away the miles between London and Canterbury, entertaining each other. And they're all going to find this particularly hilarious, of course, after it's been established from the prologue that the merchant hates women and particularly hates his own wife. Um, we learn that it, to take a wife, it is a glorious thing. And we can imagine the uproarious laughter in response to that from the assembled pilgrims. Especially, we are told, when one is old, as January is, as the wife is the fruit of his treasure. Apologies for the, you know, mangled pronunciation of all these words. If you've got your text open, you'll know where to look for the quotes. Now, this particular quote uh, bestows a financial value on a wife, establishes her as the husband's property. Uh, typical mercantile imagery, i.e. the kind of imagery we would expect from a merchant. The husband's lot is compared to that of the bachelor, who has nothing but pain and woe, as he sings of any adversity, whereas the, ma whereas the married man can expect joy and solace. Of course, an ironic reversal of what the merchant really thinks. So thickly is the irony laid on that the merchant even pines for this yoke of marriage, the snur or bond imagery suddenly becoming something he actively welcomes. Uh, actually, ironic rhetorical questions feature heavily in this section. Who can be so buxom as a wife? Buxom meaning obedient. Uh, quickly followed by who can be so attentive to keep him sick and whole as is his make. Uh, sickness and health. We're getting the, um, again, ironic uh, incorporation of words from the marriage ceremony and from the Bible. Then the merchant takes up arms again with total irony against I think I'm right in saying Theophrasty, whose anti-female writings he, of course, vehemently disagrees with, but can't help gleefully quoting in full for us, uh, just in case we weren't aware of exactly uh, what he's got against women. And this uh, culminates with the rather prophetic assertion that if you take a wife unto they hold, for lightly mayst thou been a cockwold. And with great mocking dignation, the merchant says, defy Theophrast, and hark me. But he's not done with the irony or the misogyny just yet, as we will learn in the next gripping instalment of the Merchant's Prologue and Tale podcasts. See you then.